Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Crypto News Alerts. In today's show, we'll be discussing the altcoins having dumped the most weekly while Bitcoin stalls at $26,000, as well as Arthur Hayes says that Larry Fink and BlackRock are coming for Bitcoin and the crypto industry. I'll be explaining how. We'll also be discussing BlackRock secretly buying Bitcoin, and nobody knows about it. In fact, BlackRock is a major shareholder in four of the five most major Bitcoin mining companies. We'll also be discussing that the SEC needs to take the win and approve this BlackRock Bitcoin ETF as the world's largest asset manager looks to offer a spot Bitcoin ETF in the US. Regulators have little choice but to approve it. We'll also be discussing Europe's first spot Bitcoin ETF now listed on the Euronext Amsterdam exchange. That's right. And less than a week after the SEC delayed its decision on a spot Bitcoin ETF approval in the United States. We'll also be discussing why Bitcoin will likely hit 100,000 within the next six months before the Bitcoin halving, as well as Bitcoin OG Adam Back bets surprising some on Bitcoin smashing $100,000 as well before the halving, now less than six months away. Quoting Adam back here, the bet is on. I bet Bitcoin reaches or exceeds $100,000 between now and the halving, March 31st, 2024. I'll be breaking this down for you. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this plus so much more in today's show. And welcome everyone just tuning in. A quick reminder, if you're new to the channel, make sure to smash that like button as well as subscribe if you'd like to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day, just like this. Also, a quick reminder that we have released the crypto news alerts official clips channel, which is now live. If you want to receive daily clips from this live, live stream delivered to you on a regular basis, be sure to smash that uh, button, the link right below this video in the description and subscribe to the Crypto News Alerts uh, Clips channel. And I greatly appreciate everyone's support, of course. And welcome each and every one of you just tuning in. This is podcast episode number 1384. It is Sunday, August 27th, 2023. And I'm your fearless host, JV. Naturally, we have lots to cover as we do each and every day, 365 days out of the year, seven days a week. Week. So let's start off with our market watch. Hallelujah. The Bitcoin market is back in the green, but barely holding on to that $26,000 support. We also have Ether in the green along with BNB, while XRP and Polkadot are correcting and in the red. And checking out coinmarketcap.com, the current crypto market cap still sits just above that trillion dollar milestone with about $16 billion in volume in the past 24 hours, with the Bitcoin dominance at 48.3% and the Ether dominance at 18.9%. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers in the past 24 hours, we have DYDX up 6%, trading at $2.21, followed by Thorchain up 6.5%, trading at $1.47, followed by Conflux up 5.5%, trading just above 12.7 cents. And checking out crypto bubbles. We can see the top 100 crypto gainers for the past week. It's just good to see the majority of the altcoin market back in the green and out of the red with some of those top gainers, including Rune, DYDX, and CFX. And checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, one of my favorite indicators, shows we're currently rated a 38 in fear, same as yesterday. Last week was a 37, and last month, a 52, which is neutral. So there you have it. How many of you have been taking advantage of this recent dip? Let me know your honest thoughts in the comments below. And how many of you feel that the Bitcoin price action is likely to continue dropping lower so you can stack more stats on the low? Let me know your honest thoughts. And now let's break down today's Bitcoin technical analysis. Check out the charts and what's popping with the King Crypto. And welcome again to everyone just joining us and tuning in. I appreciate the support. As always, Bitcoin's price performance over the past 24 hours is hardly surprising given the lower trading volumes during the weekends and the asset has not moved an inch from that $26,000 level, which is precisely where we're currently at. Meanwhile, the all Coins are also highly stagnant on the daily scale, but some have posted notable losses since last Sunday. Let's start with Bitcoin. Bitcoin was in a similar situation last week, meaning it had stalled for weeks at around that $29,000 level before a sudden price dump took it south by over three grand to a chart to a two month low. And it tried to recover some of those losses, but eventually settled in at 26K. The previous weekend was uneventful and the asset stood quietly at around that line again. Nothing really changed at the start of the business week. And 
Bitcoin failed to make any major moves. Now it did finally on Wednesday when it dipped by over $500. However, the bulls quickly intercepted the move and pushed the crypto back north. And then this Thursday brought a more noticeable price increase that drove the Bitcoin price all the way up to 26,800. But unfortunately, Bitcoin fell there, returning back to 26,000, where it had been stuck for the past 48 hours. Now, as a result, its market cap remained at just under 510 billion, and its dominance over the alts is just shy of 48 and a half percent. Isn't that insanity to be discussing Bitcoin in the year 2023 and the market cap is only 510 billion, which is a half a trillion? I think that is insanity. Anyways, let's discuss the weekly losses. They are more volatile by nature on the alt market, having also been quite sluggish in their price movements over the past few days. And the weekend has not changed that. Aside from TonCoin, which was up over 3% earlier in the day, most other large cap alts are minor gainers, including Ripple, Cardano, Ethereum, Solana, Dogecoin, as well as uh, Polkadot. Now, which altcoins are you currently bullish on, if any? Feel free to express your thoughts in that live chat down below. And at the end of the show, as we do every day, I'll be reading everyone's comments out loud and interacting in our live Q&A session. And with that being shared, fam, now let's break down our next breaking story of the day. And that's the latest with the BlackRock ETF. Today's focus is actually going to dive heavily into the approval of a BlackRock ETF and what this would mean for Bitcoin and the entire crypto industry. As you can tell by the topics of choice here on the right, we have the BlackRock ETF, the SEC approval, the Europe Spot ETF. Then we're going to be discussing why a Bitcoin price of 100000 is likely within the next six months before the Bitcoin halving scheduled to be in April of 2024, followed by Adam Back's bet. He's literally betting a lot of Satoshis that the Bitcoin price action will hit that six-figure mark before the halving as well. And then we'll dive into our live uh, Q&A. But yeah, let's discuss Arthur Hayes says that the giants of traditional finance, TradeFi, are planning a subtle takeover of the Bitcoin and crypto industries. In a new blog post, Hayes says there is now a battle as to who owns crypto with legacy financial institutions circling the industry and the depths of the bear market after many crypto firms have died off. Quoting Crypto Hayes, what I'm trying to say is that crypto itself was never the problem. This issue is who owns it? Does it make sense now why banks and asset managers all of a sudden warmed up to crypto as soon as their competition was deaded? They know the government is coming for their deposit base, and they need to make sure that the only available antidote to inflation, crypto, is under their control. Facts. Trade five banks and asset managers will offer crypto exchange traded funds we know as ETFs or similar tight managed products that give the client a crypto derivative in exchange for fiat cash. The fund managers get to charge egregious fees because they are the only game in town that allows investors to easily sell fiat for crypto financial returns. And if crypto in the coming decades can have a larger monetary systemic impact than the euro dollar market, then Trade Fi can more than recoup their losses due to unfavorable banking banking regulations. They do this by becoming the crypto gatekeepers for the multi-trillion dollar deposit bases. I think he's making a lot of sense. Let me know if you agree. Hayes says the banks and regulators could agree to restrict in-kind redemptions of crypto products or force them to convert to fiat currency every time they want to withdraw or transfer, more or less, trapping them within the corporate banking architecture. The crypto billionaire says that BlackRock, the largest asset manager in the world, will likely attempt to corner much of Bitcoin's consensus network as well as the mining industry, quoting him again, the more philosophical philosophical question is whether we can retain the ethos of Lord Satoshi when the industry is flooded with possibly trillions of dollars parked in financial products firmly within the fiat trade fi system. Larry Fink doesn't give two what's about decentralization. His business is based on centralizing assets at BlackRock. Breach. What impact would an asset manager like BlackRock have on Bitcoin improvement proposals that, for example, increase privacy or censorship resistance, BlackRock, Vanguard, Fidelity, etc., will rush to offer ETFs that track an index of publicly listed crypto mining firms, very quickly, mining will discover that these mega asset managers will control large voting blocks of their stock and will affect the management decisions. In fact, here's where we're currently at. Check this out, showing you directly right here in this chart. BlackRock is secretly buying Bitcoin and nobody even knows it. BlackRock is a major shareholder in four of the five most major Bitcoin mining companies. You can see it right here. BlackRock, uh, they own 6% percent share in Riot Blockchain. 
which makes them the number two shareholder. They own 6.44% in Marathon Digital Holdings, making them the number two shareholder. They own uh, also uh, less than a percent in Cypher Mining. They own uh, nothing in HUD 8 Mining. That's the one they don't own yet. And then they own 2.28% in Terra Wolf. So these numbers are likely to continue to increase as BlackRock seems to have their hand on literally every major corporation in the world. In fact, I heard a statistic which was very alarming to say the least. And again, I am. Uh, this is not a direct quote, but I'm paraphrasing. But I heard it said that BlackRock owned like something like above 80% of all the major companies in the S&P 500. Did you know they even own a portion of MicroStrategy, Michael Saylor's company? And like a large portion, we're talking about like 8%. So they already are positioned to win with indirect exposure to Bitcoin through these Bitcoin mining companies. So it just goes to show you, BlackRock is here. They're planting their flag and they're not going anywhere and they're most likely going to get what they what they want so two of the most bullish catalysts uh, for Bitcoin right now in my humble opinion obviously the Bitcoin having only six seven months out and we also have the BlackRock spot ETF application which I feel will likely get approved by the SEC sometime next year in 2024 but let me know your honest thoughts in the comments right down below and now let's discuss more precisely the SEC approving the BlackRock ETF as well as the list of others as the Bitcoin game theory continues in full effect. Here we go. Blockchain, not Bitcoin, is dead. May that nonsense rest in peace, RIP. None other than Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, recently echoed a sentiment I have been stressing for years that Bitcoin is uniquely positioned as a monetary instrument for the digital world as a sound money store of value, while tokenization of the financial system will improve efficiency and cut costs. Tokenization in this context describes using smart contracts to represent real world assets, enabling global multi currency and peer-to-peer -peer trading. This argument goes against both Bitcoin maxis and traditional financial types who want to be seen embracing the technology but don't really understand it. Fink's televised appearance were timed in support of BlackRock's app for the Bitcoin spot ETF, which has significantly influenced the entire narrative around both Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. This move, along with other recent events in the digital asset space, sparked a renewed interest in crypto regulation and legislation in the corridors of power in Washington, D.C. The proof is in the introduction of bipartisan crypto market structure bills in both the House of Representatives as well as the Senate. And the House bill in particular is relatively comprehensive and confers jurisdiction over different aspects of crypto to both the CFTC as well as the SEC. It has become extremely clear in any case that regulation by enforcement must end and that new rules must be written. So if approved, this Bitcoin spot ETF would provide a regulated and secure avenue for financial intermediaries to include Bitcoin in their client portfolios, such intermediaries, including registered investment advisors, institutional asset managers, and brokerage firms have direct or indirect control of over more than $110 trillion in assets under management. Let that sink in. That's larger than any of the GDPs of the nations in the world. $110 trillion frickin' dollars. If a meaningful proportion of those firms agreed that Bitcoin should have a small allocation in their investment portfolios, the impact would be enormous in the long term. Could you imagine? I mean, even 1% allocation to Bitcoin, we're talking blowing past 100,000 effortlessly. What if 5%, 10%, 20%? We're talking about multi-million dollar Bitcoin price projection. Preach. <laughs> it's worth noting that BlackRock's app was different from all the preceding apps because the firm's near-perfect record of seeing applications through, its sheer size of political influence, but also because the design of the product, its app and subsequent amendments has proposed a surveillance sharing agreement with Coinbase and the NASDAQ, which is clearly designed to provide the SEC with enough oversight to satisfy its desire for jurisdiction while issuing its concerns of a market manipulation. This would allow Chair Gary Gensler, as we call No Clarity Gary here on the channel, the ability to claim a political win by gaining surveillance over spot Bitcoin trading, which would reign in the asset that, by his own admission, he has no direct jurisdiction over it as a commodity. And they already deemed Bitcoin as not an unregistered security both the CFTC as well as the SEC. It's also worth noting that BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF is structured very similarly to the gold ETF, as well as several other approved spot precious metal products, ultimately meaning BlackRock is no uh, schmo. They know what they're doing here. Those products rely on spot trading that is not even close to Bitcoin's transparency or auditability, making it hard to understand how potentially denying these apps for a Bitcoin spot ETF could be viewed as anything but arbitrary and capricious. Uh, 
capricious, if I'm pronouncing that right, which is the assertion made by Grayscale in its suit against the SEC for rejection over their own filing. There's an ongoing lawsuit for them to convert their Grayscale Bitcoin trust to a uh, spot Bitcoin ETF. If you missed the memo, now you know. The comparison with gold is... Uh, Particularly, uh, particularly relevant for the Bitcoin investors that a popular value proposition for Bitcoin is that it can, at a minimum, become a store of value for the digital world and a measure of value of fiat currencies in the same way that gold has been for thousands of years. And as we all know, Bitcoin is superior to gold in every aspect that it can be measured today. However, Bitcoin is valued at less than 1 20th of the market cap of gold. That's right. Bitcoin's only at 500 billion. We have gold at roughly probably above 10 trillion at today's values. So its future is considered more uncertain. That is why I postulate that the proper way to look at Bitcoin's value is that as an option that eventuality and approval of a BlackRock ETF would prove pivotal as the entire new class of investors would be able to invest on the basis of a digital gold narrative, just as the new class of gold investors was able to buy gold when the gold ETF was introduced. So there you have it. Do you think the regulators and Mr. No Clarity Gary will have to accept that proposal from BlackRock and make it approved. Let me know your honest thoughts in the comments right down below. I just look at the track record. I mean, they have a track record of 575 to 1 of getting their ETFs approved by the SEC. So I don't see why this would be any different. If BlackRock snaps their fingers, regulators listen. And it seems to be pretty clear to me. But let me know your honest thoughts in the comments right down below. Now let's discuss a Europe spot ETF, which is already approved and trading. Interestingly enough, after the SEC in the United States denied the spot Bitcoin ETF, let's break this one down. Over a year after its initial plan launched, the Jacobi Asset Management has now officially launched Europe's first spot Bitcoin ETF on the Euronext. Amsterdam, as breaking news reveals here, operating under the ticker Bcoin, the ETF is regulated by the Guernsey Financial Services Commission with Fidelity Digital Assets, providing custodial services, while flow traders operate at market makers, while Jane Street and DRW operate as authorized participants. The benchmark for the fund, the FT Wilshire Bitcoin Blended Price Index is provided by Wilshire Indexes. Quoting them here, it's exciting to see Europe moving ahead of the US and opening up Bitcoin investing for institutional investors who want safe, secure access to the benefits of digital assets using familiar and regulated structures like our ETF, said Martin Bendall, the CEO of Jacobi Asset Management. And he continues, unlike other products in the European market, which are debt instruments, our fund owns the underlying assets directly. Good to note. That's important. Jacoby is proud to be supported by tier one partners at the forefront of this digital asset market evolution, whilst also pioneering an innovative, environmentally sound solution for European investors. Curious how many of you are in Europe, and this is exciting news to you, as uh, Europe is blowing past the United States as the U.S. continues to get left behind when it comes to crypto adoption. Here we go. Mark Makepeace, the CEO of Wilshire. Shire indexes highlighted the significance of the launch of this ETF, stating the following, the launch of the Jacobi FT Wilshire Bitcoin ETF is an important milestone for the digital asset industry and a transformative movement for the global financial industry. We are excited about this partnership with Jacobi and as a leader in the development of institutional grade digital asset benchmarks, we're committed to helping accelerate the advancement of the entire digital asset ecosystem. And while Europe launches its first spot Bitcoin ETF, the United States continues to deliver the inevitable listing of one. Last week, the SEC delayed its decision to approve or deny the listing of Kathy Wood's ARK Invest spot Bitcoin ETF app, leaving many investors scratching their heads as to when will we finally get a spot Bitcoin ETF in the United States approved. Great, great question, isn't it? Anyways, fam, it'll be interesting. We'll be keeping you covered here on Crypto News Alerts as we get the latest developments. And again, I'm praying for a spot Bitcoin ETF in the United States, but I'm not holding my breath. As we know, the regulators prefer the futures ETFs because they don't have to hold the underlying asset, giving them the ability to manipulate and suppress the markets and the price action the same way they do with derivatives in the precious metal markets. So we need a spot Bitcoin ETF in which cannot be manipulated. And I think eventually the SEC will have to say, yes, we can't deny it any longer. It's making us look too bad when that will be. Again, I think it'll happen likely next year. But let me know your thoughts in the comments right down 
down below. And now let's discuss why the Bitcoin price will likely surge to $100,000 within the next six months before the Bitcoin halving. Then I'll be breaking down Adam Back, the Blockstream CEO, and his $100,000 Bitcoin price prediction by the time of that halving. He says by March 31st, 2023, literally six months away. And welcome to y'all just joining us. Make sure to say hello in that live chat. So why Bitcoin will hit 100 grand before the next halving? And FYI, we are going to have a Bitcoin fiesta here in Puerto Rico, and you're all invited to celebrate that price action. So here we go. Riot Platforms, one of the key players in the Bitcoin mining industry, provided expansion guidance beyond 2023. While North America's largest Bitcoin mining and hosting facility, the firm aims to elevate its mining capacity to 20.1 exahashes per second by mid-2024. Expansion is a good sign, right? It also projects a further expansion of 35.4 exahashes per second by the end of the same year. Quoting them here, the agreement provides a delivery of the new miners starting in December of 2023 with miner development planned to begin in quarter one of 2024 upon full deployment of the 33,280 miners ordered, which is anticipated to be completed by mid-2024. Interestingly, right? Right around that time after the halving, Riot's self-mining hash rate capacity is expected to increase to 20.1 exahashes per second, according to the announcement. Now, should Riot platform succeed, it'll emerge as the top Bitcoin mining enterprise, outpacing rivals Marathon Digital Holdings, as well as Clean Spark. And as I pointed out a little earlier, Riot here, you can see BlackRock is already a owner and the second largest shareholder of uh, Riot blockchain, which makes it even more interesting, right? Now, the overall Bitcoin network hash rate has significantly increased as larger players expand their capacities. The increased competition for block rewards due to a higher hash rate can in turn impact the minor profitability, especially post having when the block rewards are cut in half. Now, a recent report by Seeking Alpha suggests that the 2024 Bitcoin halving will push the average operational cost for Bitcoin mining of one Bitcoin to between 30,000 and 60,000 per coin and reduce the mining earnings by 50%. So with the highest recorded Bitcoin Bitcoin value being at around 69,000, which we achieved in uh, what November of 2021, a significant reduction in revenue could jeopardize many Bitcoin miners. Quitting them here, we don't see any way where the Bitcoin mining sector can come out unscathed. Even with Riot's ambitious 35 exahashes per second, our model suggests the Bitcoin needs to trade above 98,000 per coin to justify Riot's current valuation post having, according to the report. Now, many industry experts also share the belief that the Bitcoin price will reach 100,000 by the time of the 2024 halving. One of those individuals is Adam Back, who some and many still believe is Satoshi Nakamoto. We're going to be breaking that down in great detail in our next story. But I also like to point out he is not alone in that bullish outlook. We also have Samson Mao, the Jan 3 CEO, who shares the sentiment expecting a record price for Bitcoin before the halving, not after. And adding to the chorus is Standard Chartered. And just FYI, BlackRock is the primary shareholder of this major bank as well, which which had revised its Bitcoin prediction to 120,000 per coin by the end of next year in 2024. The international banking firm's rationale hinges on the increased minor profitability for a Bitcoin mine, resulting in reduced Bitcoin sales and a subsequent surge of the Bitcoin prices. This perspective underscores the notion that the miners can meet costs by selling fewer Bitcoin as the Bitcoin prices continue to soar and consequently retaining more Bitcoin in anticipation of future price hikes. And likewise, we have Matrix Port maintaining the Bitcoin making a one-year high in June of 2023 could have signaled the end of the bear market and the start of a new bull run as it did in the previous cycles. This indicator has been triggered four times and in each instance, a bull market developed over the span of 12 to 18 months. So if history is any guide, then there is now 100% probability that by the end of next year in 2024, the year of the halving, Bitcoin will experience another massive bull market with a price target of $125,000 according to the report. So there you have it. How many of you are just as bullish as some of these major institutions such as Standard Chartered Bank and BlackRock, you know, Fidelity, Schwab, and the list goes on and on. Let me know your honest thoughts in the comments right down below. And now let's break down our featured story of the day. The Blockstream CEO, Adam Back, predicting and putting his money where his mouth is and betting like a million Satoshis or whatever the amount is, which we'll be covering here shortly, that the Bitcoin price action will indeed hit six figures by March 
31st, 2024, approximately only six months away. And if you'd love to see a six-figure Bitcoin price, holla at your boy. Let's break this down. And a massive shout out to Adam Back as well as Samson Mao. Blockstream CEO Adam Back, one of the crypto early pioneers, we call a Bitcoin OG, is pretty confident Bitcoin will hit the all-time high of over $100,000 before Bitcoin's having in 2024 and is willing to drop a million wagering on it. That's not a million dollars though, fam. We're talking about Satoshi's. Just got to throw that out there. And in August 7th conversation on X, uh, Back agreed to bet with Synonymous X user the Bitcoin would reach 100000 by March 31st, 2024, and said they believe it won't happen until 2025. So Adam stepped up and put his money where his mouth is reading this thread. I'm okay with the 100000 probably sooner than the halving April 2024, though in my view. And then Viking Go said, want to bet me? And then uh, got many other plebs. I want to take Adam's stats. And then Adam responded, so greater than $100,000 per coin by the 31st of March 2024, midnight Zulu, or you win, right? How many sats? So the wager date comes in roughly a month before the halving, which is currently on track to be April 26th, as Back believes that the price will probably reach a new all-time high sooner than the actual date of the halving. Now, bets on dramatic increases in the price of Bitcoin have attracted huge sums in the past, with uh, Balaji, the former CTO of Coinbase, betting a million dollar wager that Bitcoin would have hit a million dollars within 90 days. Obviously, that didn't come into fruition. Uh, Back also sees bullishness about Bitcoin in the past, saying that in February, Bitcoin could have reached 10 million by the sixth halving by 2032. So this time, Back is actually setting down hard earned funds to back his most recent claim. Unfortunately, it's not a million dollars, it's a million Satoshis. So, but it is what it is of uh, roughly $300 in. Uh, Satoshi terms or over $1,000 if Back's prediction comes true. Now, a Satoshi, as we all know, is uh, divisible. I think it's 100 million Satoshis within a single uh, Bitcoin. Thus, it is a rather small bet for Back, considering he's probably worth somewhere between 50 and $300 million rumor has it, as an early Bitcoin OG. However, in response to Back's original post, we also have Jan3 CEO and fellow Bitcoiner Samson Mao said that he too expects a new all-time high for Bitcoin pre-having, not post. Let's check it out over here on X, reading Adam Back's tweet. The bet is on. I bet Bitcoin reaches or exceeds $100,000 per coin between now and the halving scheduled to be. Uh, the date he put on this was March 31st, 2024, with Viking Bitcoin 1 million sats to the winner. So just a fun little wager. And then, of course, we had, uh, I believe it was Adam uh, or Samson Mao responding somewhere to this in light, saying he also agreed. And uh, we shall see how this uh, wager uh, plays out. Nonetheless, it'll be interesting. Here we go. Samson Mao, I also think the new all-time high pre-having, not post. So there you have it. Six-figure Bitcoin, send it before the halving. Because we know if that hits that price before the halving, we're going to get multiple six figures post having just saying. So despite the small bet, it attracted some snide replies and the responses, but still reflects a growing bullish trend of the price of Bitcoin amongst market commentators and analysts ahead of the next halving. Meanwhile, in a February 24th interview, we also have Charles Edwards, founder of Capriole Investments, said that the upcoming halving will see Bitcoin become the hardest asset in the entire world and went on to predict that the market is already in the early stages of a new bull cycle. Preach. You already know, fam. So let's freaking go. Let me know if you agree or disagree with this wager by Adam Back and Samson Mao that the Bitcoin price will likely hit that six-figure mark pre-having in 2024. Again, roughly only six months away. Now, massive shout out to everyone in the live chat. I appreciate all the support on a Sunday. Help show some support to the channel if you're not already subscribed and you love receiving live streams seven days a week here on YouTube or Rumble, whatever platform you're currently on. Make sure, show your support. I greatly, greatly appreciate that. Shout out to Bitcoin Maximus. Shout out to Bring Facts. Shout out to Bryce Cooley. Shout out to Stephen Hubbs. Shout out to McLovin. Shout out Shout out to Knox Bill, shout out to Bubba, shout out to Sarah Wawa, <laughs> shout out to David number 23, good to see the fam, Steve Kingston, Zero Dollar G Row, Boz Dragon, what is up, Cryptic Sniper, Joe Fuentes, Satwise Jenks in the building, what's good, what's good? Yeah, I'm going to start reading and rattling some of these comments out loud as best that I can, Bakersfield, California in the building, please stand up, and I think I need a sip of this capucha to quench my thirst. My favorite flavor, by the way, uh, it's lemon and ginger. It's freaking delicious. If you're into capucha, 
Highly recommend it. Good stuff, fam. Anyways, Mr. Still Stacking says, Adam Back's bet is crazy bold. You got to respect the OG. I respect the Bitcoin OGs. Adam Back, if it wasn't for him, we may not have Bitcoin because he played a big role in its development. And like I said, some people believe he's Satoshi Nakamoto. What are your thoughts, fam? Anyways, some people believe it's uh, it's uh, you know a collective, not just a single individual. Evan, I can't get the Discord chat for the part to work. Can someone invite me into it? Oh my God, great, great reminder. I do have a Discord. We recently launched a Discord server and anyone can join it at discord.cryptonewsalerts.net. Feel free to reach out to me or to any of our mods and we will definitely get you sorted there so you can start utilizing it, taking advantage of it. What's up, Anthony? Appreciate you tuning in, fam. What's good? Black Swan. On the dawn, BTC, you already know. Jeremy Amos, smash that like. Greatly appreciate that, fam. Better stack that coin now. BlackRock is going to vacuum the Bitcoin up to make the price rocket. In two years, it might be out of reach of the price wise for the average people. You make a great point. Preach, fam. And welcome, Mushroom Wizards, as well. And everyone uh, just tuning in, I'm going to try to fix this lighting in the B cam to make it a little cleaner. There we go. I think that's a little better. Let me know if you can see a little more clearly in that live chat. I appreciate the feedback, fam. Savvy Bitcoiner, they printed $8 trillion, gave you 1400 and sent the rest to their friends. And people wanted them to print the money. Oh, I can get 1400 free dollars. Go ahead and print $20 trillion, which we'll be paying back through inflation for generations to come. Makes no sense, but that's how easily people get duped by the forces <laughs> in control. You know what I mean? 100,000 is bearish. Facts, Knoxville. I love that. That's that's comment of the day right there. 100,000 is bearish. Why am I wasting my time doing live streams talking about Bitcoin going to 100,000 when we could talk about Bitcoin going to 100 million? I think you make a great point. What do you guys think? Let me know. Stephen Hubbs, 100,000 before the halving. I would be surprised by early 2025 is more likely. Good predictions, fam. Appreciate the insights. Pain will continue until October, I think. Almost a certainty says dollar is a year row. September had not been a good month for Bitcoin. Will it continue this year? We'll also keep in mind that, uh, you know, the beginning of the year, uh, would we jump up uh, roughly 50 or 70 percent? And that's not typical either. So Bitcoin tends to do its own thing. And just because it's never happened before doesn't mean it can't happen this time. Also, there's more of a genuine supply shock for this Bitcoin having. So I couldn't be more uh, bullish personally, especially with all the Bitcoin ETF applications out there, which we hinted upon today in the show. But let me know your thoughts. Terry Gibbs, still buying Polkadot and Cosmos. Word up. Who else is bullish on Polkadot or Cosmos, or which altcoins are you bullish on, if any? Please do let me know in those comments right down below. Cryptic Sniper, wouldn't be surprised to me if BlackRock had been dumping it every time we hit 32 to hold back the price until the ETF. Of course, would you rather get a multi hundred billion dollar position or potentially a trillion dollar position in Bitcoin when it's at 32,000? Or do you prefer sending it back down to 20 or 25,000? You know what I mean? It's all about the almighty dollar and profits. Unfortunately, that's the world we live in. And of course, the regulators want to give all their friends on Wall Street the opportunity to stack sats on the low. BlackRock rules the world. Like we mentioned, just a handful of these large asset managers in the world control over $100 trillion in assets under management. The entire total addressable market in the entire world is probably $700 trillion. So when you have just a few select major corporation giants uh, holding over $100 trillion, that's called a monopoly, my friend. So anything they want, I would expect for them to get. So if they want the Bitcoin ETF approved, they will get that approved or they wouldn't be wasting their time through the approval process with the SEC because they're more powerful than the SEC. BlackRock and Larry Fink are more powerful than Gary Gensler and the chairman, you know, and all that good stuff. That's just the reality of it. What's up, Baz? Bloomberg Intelligence is a research division of Bloomberg that publishes reports on Bitcoin. The firm's analysts have predicted the Bitcoin price to reach $100,000 by 2025. Great, send it and let's go. Love it. <laughs> Would be happy to see 45,000 before December. Merry Christmas. That's a great target as well. I think if we can get close to 50,000, that's going to set the stage for next year before the halving in 2024. Fundstrat Global Advisors is a financial services firm, publishes research on a variety of markets, including Bitcoin. The firm's analysts predict that Bitcoin can reach 120, 125,000 by 2025. That's right. 
We cover that commonly here on the show. Mushroom says, I'm not sure if BlackRock is getting into Bitcoin will be a good thing. They are doing terrible things in the housing and renting space. If they control the majority of the percentage of the Bitcoin, it could mess things up. That's right. I also heard a rumor that they own the majority of the real estate in the world and they will continue to do so. I mean, kind of like Bankman Freed. If you had unlimited amounts of money because you're printing it out of thin air through your scam tokens, in this case, we're talking about the US dollar with scam Bankman Freed. We're talking about FTT. You have all this money. You want to convert the fake money into to something tangible and real, what do you do? You buy real estate. So that's what BlackRock is doing right now. They're buying mass amounts of real estate. They're buying Bitcoin mining stocks and putting their hands and money, which they're able to accumulate out of thin air, you know what I mean? Uh, and put it anywhere they want into tangible assets. So virtually they can own everything in the world. Uh, I think this is uh, very much sucks, obviously, but just a great reason to be uh, stacking sats. Uh, I count the silver lining and the blessings as we have had the opportunity to front run BlackRock and the less and the rest of Wall Street since you know the inception of Bitcoin. I don't know when you guys got in. I got in in uh, 2017, and I'm glad I did because I got to buy Bitcoin. You know, back when it was less than you know two thousand dollars, and start stacking those stats ahead of the rest. Now, two hundred and sixty one dollar bet. As a, yeah, I mean, it is what it is, facts. If I was worth $300 million, I'd be betting $100 million if I was confident in it. So I think Adam personally is just having a lot of fun with it. And I think it's great. I think it gets attention. I don't think he needs to pull a Balaji and put a million dollars down to some guy, you know, questioning where the Bitcoin price will go. I think he made his point. He's getting coverage. I'm covering him. A lot of other analysts are covering him. And he's a Bitcoin OG. He deserves our respect. And I hope he's right. I genuinely do believe he is right. And I don't think the wager amount will determine what Bitcoin will actually do. I think it's just fun at the end of the day. And uh, we'll see how it plays out. Bryce says, I own five ounces of gold and 20, 220 ounces of silver coins. If Mr. Kiyosaki is right, my net worth would be $13.5 million. Well, for your sake, I hope Kiyosaki is right. And for all of our sakes, because who wouldn't want to see a million dollar Bitcoin price action? I highly, highly skeptical, however, on the precious metal market because it's controlled and regulated and they don't want you to take your money out of their precious fiat Ponzi scheme and put it into precious metals. So what do they do? Manipulate the market. They don't want gold to go up too high. So they've been suppressing the price action. And in fact, JP Morgan Chase has paid billions of dollars in fines over the years, literally getting caught red-handed uh, manipulating precious metal markets. And Max Kaiser, you know, talks about this all the time, you know, with the silver markets when he launched the, you know, crash JP Morgan and started pumping silver. And then what did they do? They just created more derivatives. And Max said something like for every ounce of silver, there's 50 times the amount of derivatives because derivatives, quoting Warren Buffett, are financial weapons of mass destruction. This is what the banksters use as tools to be able to you know, uh, destroy economies and ultimately pillage uh, the people, which we're witnessing in firsthand. Back in the 1920s, you can buy a house with one gold double eagle coin, but right now gold and silver is a extremely undervalued. That's true, but it's by design. I mean, if it wasn't manipulated, gold could be $100,000 an ounce. Why wouldn't it be? Because the dollar continues to lose purchasing power. So anything against the dollar you would think would be rising, but they suppress it. But they cannot do that to Bitcoin because Bitcoin's incorruptible and there is a finite limited supply. Like real talk, precious metals, if they want to introduce more supply to the market and manipulate more, they can create more derivatives or they can just create more resources, uh, invest in more resources to mining more gold. In fact, uh, Elon could probably find more gold on Mars if he truly had a desire to do so. So there is nothing in comparison to Bitcoin due to the finite limited supply. Gold, they're just going to continue to find more for the rest of our lives. So there is no comparison when it comes to a store of value because unlimited supply, you know, practically scarce, but not truly scarce versus truly scarce and the most pristine, you know, uh, money to ever be created. Perfect money, which we call BTC. Let me know if you agree. Holla at your boy. And with that being shared, fam, let's read some more of the q and I appreciate you guys. We've got 230 plus people live on YouTube right now. Shout out to everyone on Rumble. Shout out to Johnny Staint. 
Uh, Saint, I appreciate you tuning in. Fam, he says, any opinion on Start9 Embassy? I have never heard of it, so you have to enlighten me with what that even means. Is that a, a Bitcoin miner or a company? Let me know. Uh, Hoddle Mike says, smash that like button. I greatly appreciate that, fam. Much love and much respect. Johnny Saint said, what up, JV? Appreciate you. Positive vibes all in. King Coin, time to accumulate. Let's raise the vibrations 100%. And shout out to my people in the UK and England. I appreciate the support. And if you're not already, follow us over on Rumble. You know what to do, fam. It's our backup channel where we broadcast. So if God forbid something was to ever happen again to the YouTube channel, we got a backup. And also, you know, we do have the new Clips channel. I encourage you all to subscribe and support the movement. It's clips.cryptonewsalerts.net or you'll find the link in the description right down below. Appreciate all the support, fam. You guys rock. Much love. Mark says, hey, from the UK. Hey, Mark Silk. Appreciate you tuning in from the UK. It's been several years since I last been in the UK. So, you know, shout out to everyone out there. Steven says, I believe Satoshi is most likely out on back. I think it's the most likely candidate. Wouldn't you agree? Renting makes you poor. Own real estate is the best way to get rich. Facts. Good point there. It's just a lot of people, unfortunately, are not in a position to own real estate, hence why they rent. If they had the option, you know, if interest rates were uh, reasonable, 3%. Maybe there'd be more people buying homes, but when you have interest rates, I don't know how high they are right now. I'm going to assume it's like 8% or north of that. There's a reason right there. It's virtually impossible for the average person to purchase a home right now, and the real estate will continue to go up as BlackRock continues their monopoly. You know what I mean? Like real world monopoly, fam. Bryce Compton is one city I would never want to live. Uh, I believe that is in LA of California, right? Uh, shout out to Compton. True Talk, JV, eventually Bitcoin to infinity. You already know, because one Bitcoin will always, forever, be equivalent to one Bitcoin. There's no denying that, fam. That's a fact. You know what I mean? Yeah, it is what it is. If you don't think the ETF will be passed, remember that Larry and Gary play golf together. So there you have it. <laughs> Facts, fam. Preach. Corruption at its finest. Collusion. It is what it is. I owned a lot of physical silver until 2017 and sold most of it for Bitcoin. It is one of the best financial decisions I have ever made. Congratulations, Steve. You did the right thing, fam, and you're being rewarded for it. BlackRock will pay over the odds for houses and properties, but will probably never sell them and will rent. They're only going to be up in line with the greatest reset. Greg Brown says, I hope Bitcoin keeps dropping. I need to get one of those at some point. Well, don't wait until you can get the whole one at once. Start stacking dollar cost average and get in the game, fam. Don't sit on the sidelines for too long. You may miss out. BlackRock strategy in the property market. Yeah, domination, monopoly, control. You got it. Bitcoin greater than gold. You already know, always will be. My fortune cookie said Bitcoin 100,000 soon. You for real, Knoxville? You really get a fortune cookie, open it up, and it say Bitcoin to 100,000 soon? I'd be like, thank you, Lord. Count my blessings, fam. Thank you, God. Thank you, Satoshi. Fax JV. Holding one's own private keys makes Bitcoin price and manipulation harder, too. That's right. So don't keep your crypto on the exchange because at the end of the day, not your keys, not your coins. Wherever you put your crypto, that person owns it. So if you're not holding your own keys, therefore you don't own it. And it's kind of like money in the bank. You don't own the money in the bank. The bank owns it. Even if it's insured by the FDIC up to $250,000, regardless of what they say, guess what? There's not enough capital to repay everyone if there was a bank run. So the cool thing with Bitcoin, we have the power to pull our private keys at will. And they can't do that in the precious metal markets as well. You know what I mean? So BlackRock by Bitcoin is concerning, especially when you look at how they are disrupting the single family home market. Exactly. If they rest uh, Bitcoin like housing, we could have some concerns. Treat it. Well, I mean, I think it's a, a bullish thing. Personally, I think Michael Saylor addressed this. He said something like uh, comparing a major corporation, a technology company like in Korea or something. And he says, if they decide to you know, uh, speak English in Korea or in Japan, that doesn't undermine the English language, comparing that to Bitcoin and with the adoption of BlackRock. It's just a part of the game. I mean, there's a lot of obviously institutional money. There's trillions. We already discussed the total addressable market exceeding 700 trillion, just major uh, asset managers alone, just a handful of them control over 100 trillion. So if we want to expect that money to flow into Bitcoin, we need a spot ETF because that money is never coming until we get that. You know what I mean? Bitcoin did what it did thus far without that. And ironically, I truly do believe that Bitcoin doesn't need the ETF, but the opposite around. Like the ETF truly needs Bitcoin. You know what I mean? The companies truly need that right now if they want to start investing. Uh, treat, not rest. Completely understand what you're saying, Halo, and I appreciate your feedback. Satoji was the second coming to Jesus. Preach of Nazareth. 
<laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, they were just recently caught red-handed again. I saw that. I saw an article that had to pay like hundreds of millions of dollars and more fines for manipulating the gold and precious metal markets. So nothing new under the sun, fam. It is what it is. Anyways, now for a recap of what I covered with you here in today's show, we discussed the latest Bitcoin technical analysis. We also discussed uh, Crypto Hayes, aka Arthur Hayes, says that Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, is coming for Bitcoin in the crypto industry, and we explained how. We also discussed that BlackRock has been secretly buying Bitcoin without anyone really noticing. BlackRock is a major shareholder in four of the five major Bitcoin mining companies currently, and I think their positions will only continue to grow. We also discussed the latest with its uh, the SEC needing to take the win finally and approve this BlackRock Bitcoin ETF. We truly do feel it is inevitable and only a matter of time. We also discussed Europe's first spot Bitcoin ETF is now listed on the Euronext Amsterdam exchange less than a week after the SEC, the latest decision on the first spot Bitcoin ETF approval for the United States. We also discussed today why the Bitcoin price will likely hit $100,000 within the next six months before the Bitcoin halving, as well as Bitcoin OG, Adam Back, the Blockstream CEO, bet surprising some on the Bitcoin price action hidden six figures before the halving. But where do you feel the Bitcoin price is likely to go next? Let me know in the comments right down below. And I look forward to seeing you on tomorrow's episode. Peace.